thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Um, I wanted to, uh, let's just start with like the objective of your visit. What are you here for? Well, the purpose of my visit is really Nepal and the people of Nepal. So in my job at the Department of State is we focus a lot on making sure that we understand what people around the world are thinking and feeling, not only about U.S. policy, but about major issues of the day, food security, climate change. And so really the whole purpose of coming to Nepal is to understand what Nepalis are thinking and feeling about the issues that impact all of us. Um, Nepal is such an important partner of the United States, so it's really critical that I came here first. This is um, a part of a 12-day trip that I'm taking, and Nepal is my number one stop. Where are you going next? So I'm going to Dubai, where I'm going to be um, meeting with some of our colleagues there, talking to some regional media. And then I go to Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan afterwards. And then next month, I'm going to be traveling to Sub-Saharan Africa and visiting a number of countries there. So in Nepal, um, US government has always supported like democracy, and it's always run programs on youth, minorities, women, um, and lately in media as well. So could you talk a little about that? I think what we hear from the United States government is what the people of Nepal want. Um, we work in partnership with Nepal. And these are the issues that are important to the people here. They care about what youth are thinking. They care about the rights of women. They care about having a vibrant society. And so we're just happy to partner with Nepal and um, contribute really for a global ecosystem that makes life better for all of us. So US has had like a very uh, long diplomatic ties with Nepal. 75 years. Yep. <laughs> but um, even till the very recent past, um, past, US looked to Nepal, into Nepal through the lens of India. Uh, we've seen that change now. Mm. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the changing geopolitical dynamics? What I would say is that Nepal or any country in the world needs to be approached as a partner for itself. The United States doesn't look to Nepal as, as a country that we use in, in sort of a balance. We look to Nepal as a partner, as a critical country, and it's a country we want to learn and engage more about. Um, what you hear Secretary Blinken, Tony Blinken, my boss at the Department of State say, is that it's important that we listen as much as we talk. And that's, I think, increasingly what you're seeing in our relationship to Nepal and the people here. Let's talk a little about disinformation, because mm. disinformation and democracy, we've seen it around the world. We've seen it in the US, in, in our own country. And we've seen it here as well. So, um, but a lot of the disinformation and misinformation, um, it has a lot to do with the social media as well. Um, the headquarters of which are <coughs> a lot of our, in, is based in mm -hmm. the US. So what can um, the US, or how can the US work um, to combat disinformation? without infringing on freedom of speech? Such a complex question. I'm so glad you raised it. And as you mentioned, the United States doesn't have an answer to all of these problems. We see misinformation and disinformation in countries around the world. Uh, just last month, I met with G7 ministers um, in Berlin. And without fail, every single one of those countries came to the table. And they said, it is a problem in our country. So, so the question is, is how do we solve it? And, and I think there's no simple answer just because there's not one form of it. So it's gonna take all of us. It's gonna take journalists, um, who it's gonna take fact-checking organizations. It will take governments to continue to tell the truth. But most importantly, it's gonna take private citizens because media literacy is a significant part of it. You know, how do you know that you're sharing information that is true? You know, as a citizen, we have a right to know what the truth is, but we also have a responsibility that we have to share only true things. And if that's fact-checking, if that's trusting a media, if that's making sure that before we hit share on a social media site, that we know the fact, you know, that's on all of us. So it's really going to have to be a comprehensive solution. It's no easy answer. 
Is there anything that the U.S. is doing that Nepal can learn from? Well, I would ask the same thing. Is there anything that Nepal is doing that the U.S. can learn from? I think one of the things goes back to media literacy. Um, I've met activists right now in Nepal who are working on media literacy programs in schools. You know, in the United States, we don't do that evenly. Some school systems do, others don't. Is there a way that we can learn from Nepal and work together? So our kids, who as we know, are most active on social media, learn early what they can trust. And if they don't trust it, how to question it. What would you say is the role of mainstream media? Because you, you look at like communications as well. Yeah. So what do you think uh, is the role of mainstream media in the age of social media um, to safeguarding freedoms, especially in countries like Nepal with very short history of um, democracy? I, I could not feel stronger about this. Journalism is the front line of democracy. Journalists are the ones who tell the truth, who tell hard stories, who hold governments like mine to account. Um, I say this as someone who works for the government, sometimes it's uncomfortable, but it's absolutely necessary. And I would say Nepal and the United States are not different in that. Journalists in Nepal, journalists in the United States have a responsibility to hold governments and corporations and individuals to account and make sure that citizens have the information they need so they can vote, so they can be active in their government. Uh, journalists are, are everything. I mean, they really are the ones who, who are on the front lines. What has been your assessment of, say, democracy and press freedom and um, the state of disinformation, misinformation in Nepal in regards to global context? I would say um, the people I have met um, during my visit, and I'll say it's too short, I look forward to coming back, um, have been wonderful just speaking very openly, sharing ideas, sharing ideas not only with us as partners, but among each other. I've been especially impressed with the youth, with young people, because they bring a passion to this. You know, you had said uh, Nepal is, is a young democracy. Well, so is the United States. You know, we're still learning too. And, and what I see in Nepal is that vibrancy. People want to do better. Um, and, and that's what I'm taking away from this. So today I went down and saw some of the cultural heritage sites that we've worked in partnership um, with the government of Nepal as well as private groups and saw the way that they were really enmeshed in society, that people were there, they were visiting. Um, and that was astonishing. It was beautiful to see. Not only the way the people of Nepal cherish their heritage, but they make it part of their daily life. And I think there's a lesson for people all over the world on that. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.